The halving, yes. The great halving. So, for, to explain for those of you who are not quite familiar with this, every four years the amount of subsidy in each block decreases by 50 percent. So we started with 50 Bitcoin per block. We're now in the era of 25. We are going to enter the 12 and a half era. One of the interesting things about Bitcoin is that we know what the monetary policy will be in 2140, and with the Federal Reserve, we don't know what the monetary policy will be this Friday. Um, or with any of the other central banks, uh, although I have a premonition that it will probably involve more stimulus and more printing money, because that hasn't worked a hundred times, but the hundred and first it probably will. Um, so what happens in the happening? As I said, miners prepay electricity in many parts. Uh, of the mining ecosystem. That's not universal, but it is one of the characteristics of the mining community, which actually has some really serious implications on their decision-making process, because it's sunk capital. Um, secondly, we've now achieved a, a, a situation in mining where we've seen from the CPU to the GPU to the FPGA to the ASIC increases of 100 or 1,000-fold performance increases until we accelerated straight into Moore's law. And that's a wall, because 16 nanometers, done. Okay, now where do we go? Now we slow down to 2x increases every 18 months. And everyone can get the same chip, and there's no advantage in pre-ordering, and you no longer have to switch chips every three to six months. So therefore, capital, connections to silicon fabrication, centralization of purchasing no longer matter. And this has started happening at the beginning of this year, and we will go into the halvening with a situation where there will be the haves and the have-nots, those who have 60 nanometer and those who don't. And those who do not have 60 nanometer will find themselves unprofitable very quickly, and the rest will not. So we'll see. Um, I predict the price will go up and down. <laughs> and then it will probably go up and down again, because the primary driver of price is still, by a great extent, sentiment. So the happening is coming. I think Bitcoin will go up. Bye, 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 bye. Everybody else sees it. They're like, bye, 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 bye. Everybody bye. It's great. Oh, no, I'm not too sure. I'm a bit worried. Sell, 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 sell. <laughs> And up and down we go. It's going to be a roller coaster. Volatility will probably increase. We're in a period of pretty low volatility. We have been for at least a year now, um, where the volatility of 2011 and 2013 is in our past. We've been relatively stable for a tiny six billion dollar global currency. But we're going to see increased volatility. And so my suggestion is. Take a deep breath, relax, don't try to play the casino unless you are an experienced uh, stock gambler, in which case good luck to you. Um, sit back, relax, watch the fireworks, and read the news about how Bitcoin is dead or about to die because of the halving, and then wait until right after when Bitcoin is not yet dead. <laughs>